Hello and welcome to this video on how to submit and grade papers submitted through Turnitin. So again, this is the ongoing series of me trying to create English 11007. So in the last video, I created Writing Project 3. And so um, if you're not sure how that was doing, go back and watch that video. So for a student, when, they go, when they're going to submit a file for this, um, they do it a certain way and they get confused. So I show them how to do it. And uh, anyway, so for from a teacher's point of view, if you ever want to see what the students see, if you just click on the little button over here and you switch your role, you can switch your role to um, student. Okay, so when a student would look at this, this is what it looks like for them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and submit a paper as if I was a student. So I'm going to click on the assignment, and you'll notice on the assignment that it has the same summary. Okay, so you could again put what the instructions are if you want to, or whatever this is just the stuff that I put and then this is where they turn it in there's a place down here called submit paper so all they would do is click on submit paper and then it gives them this dialog box they need to give it a name that's a little different okay and they can either click on this button to search their computer like and search and try to find it that's one thing they could do or they can just drag and drop. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop this essay over there. And then I'm going to hit Add Submission. Now, what this does, we turn it in, is that it will circle here. It's important that you tell your students to wait until they get their digital receipt, which is about to pop up in three, two, whatever. That looks pretty close. Cool. Anyway, here's their digital receipt. That means that it was submitted and they have proof. In addition, this digital receipt will be sent to their Shaw email address. Yes. So they will have proof. So if they say, well, I submitted it, and you didn't get it, and you say, well, look, I, don't, I didn't see it on my side, you can always ask them, did you get a digital receipt? Oh, I don't know. I, didn't, I just clicked through it. Well, check your email. Okay? I, have, I personally have never had a problem where a student has claimed to turn it in a paper, I didn't get it, and they had a digital receipt. I've never seen that happen. But again, this is just a little safety feature for them. Okay, so now they have submitted it. Ta-da! Now, you'll notice a couple of things here. Um, they can view their digital receipt again if they want to, um, but at any point in time, it shows again, there's their name of their paper. Um, Turnitin gave it its own unique ID, okay, whatever, and it shows exactly when it was submitted. Cool, huh? Neato. That is neato. Let me hit refresh submissions because it should show me something else. Really? Really? Okay. Um, and so that's what they've done. Okay, so it shows again. You know exactly when they have turned it in. Ta da! Okay. A couple other things to note about this. Um, so if they say, no, I turned it in on time, you say, no, you really didn't, because it shows exactly when they turned it in. Another thing they can look at while they're here is um, remember how we assigned this a rubric? So I have set it up so they can look at the rubric. So they just need to click on this, and it will bring up the rubric. Ta da! Five paragraph essay. By the way, for English 110, this is the essay. So this is the rubric that we use for all five paragraph essays. This is developed for the QEP, Quality Enhancement Plan, here at the school. So we use this for the pre-test, post-test, and all five paragraph essays that we actually do in class. So that's a thing. That is certainly a thing. Anyway, um, they can go ahead and look through it. And again, I let them see the rubric ahead of time simply because... I don't want them to guess how I'm going to grade it, and, uh, and plus it helps them with the revision process. They can see exactly what they need to do to get a better grade. Um, there's that thing. So anyway, so they can look at the rubric. Okay, now, from the teacher's point of view, so let's go back to the class, and I'm going to now switch back over to my normal role, which is the instructor. Okay, so I'm going to go back down to that assignment. Ooh, okay, you know, if I also knew it was in November 6th or whatever, I could just click on that and it would jump there. Yeah, that's another thing I could do. That's pretty cool. Anyway, um, so for me to grade it, then I would click on the same thing as if I was going to submit it as a student, but now I'm going to grade it. A couple of things to note, okay? When you first pull this up as a um, teacher, you'll see that it says show 10. That means it'll only show 10 entries. Well, I don't know about you, but none of my classes only have 10 students. So I just go ahead and just change that to 50 so I can see every student. Okay? Now, 
this shows me now if I had multiple people enrolled, it would show me everybody, and if it was just blank next to their names, it means they haven't submitted it. But again, it shows me some stuff. It shows me again the you know who submitted it, the file, when they turned it in, and then it has this similarity thing. This similarity thing is the plagiarism checker. This shows that 99% of this paper has been plagiarized. Boo! That's bad. Okay, and we'll look at that in just a second. And then here you have the grade. Now to grade it, you're going to click on that pencil. Let's just show a little bit more over here. If they accidentally submit, you know, you can also um, delete the submission if they said, look, I just sent it and I sent you the wrong one, um, whatever. <clears throat> you can also also delete the submission. They cannot delete it, but you have to can delete it. So if I was going to grade this, I would click on the blue pencil, and that will open up a new web page. Ta-da! See, it's loading the new web page. Now, this is really kind of up to you on how you want to do this. Now, keep in mind there are some things over here. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to set up the ETS e-reader or e-rater. Okay, so if you click on that, in theory, it's going to load the feedback and it's going to search through the document and it's going to try to find mistakes. Ta-da! Okay. Now, this is in beta, so it's not perfect. Okay, but it does help you just as a teacher kind of get some ideas of what's wrong and what's not right and different things okay now see how let's say I'm like oh I don't agree with that I can just dismiss it make it go away click on that article error okay, I don't think that's an article error let me click on that again okay now that's fine no that's fine uh, time I experienced failure during first semester of my freshman year usually the first semester so there's an article error staying up bed uh, staying up late before going to bed hindered me okay well uh, you can decide what you want to do there. Anyway, so again, it didn't, didn't show a whole heck of a lot of them, but it didn't catch everything either. You'll notice that, um, like, there's a comma here that shouldn't be there. University spelled wrong. So that's when you can use these quick marks. Now, these quick marks are things that you can create, okay? And um, let's say, again, this is, you can have a whole different set of quick marks. And there'll be, I'm sure there's a video, I'll post it about how to create quick marks. I'm not going to show you how to do it. But you can just go ahead and have your own set of quick marks and say, oh, the spelling's wrong. So I'm just going to drag that over. Okay. Um, or you can say, like, oh, look, this is supposed to be, you know, MLA formatting. And look, the header is missing. I could say that. Um, and this is an MLA formatting issue because that date is wrong. So you can just drag and drop these where there are issues. And you can say, look, there's improper grammars, comma slices, there's comma missing. You know, gap is too big. This is not double spaced. You know, there are all sorts of issues. You can also make comments by just clicking anywhere on the screen. Again, this will just pull up the quick marks. Um, let's say we wanted to leave a note specifically about this. So we click this and leave a little note right there. You could say, no comma needed here. We could say that. And then we could uh, save that. Okay. Now, if, we, if you notice that, if you're going to be doing a lot of different things, you can convert that to a quick mark and let's call this no comma. And then you can save it in whatever set you want to and save it as a quick mark. Okay. Let me say no comma needed. Save. And then see, look, it added over there. Ta-da. Oh, I got two of those. Huh? Oh, well. Anyway, um, so that's that. Also, you can see this little text thing here. You could actually write on their paper. Um, the paper is not in the correct font. Okay. So you could leave a note that way, too. Um, again, so these are different things you can just go through and read and make notes and stuff like that. So again, if you want to like uh, just have you know general stuff, you can just do these quick marks. You can put particular you know notes, or you can have it spelled out this way. Also, another thing you can do is you can um, let's say you want to highlight the thesis statement. Okay, so let's say that's their thesis statement. Okay, well then you would leave a note and you call that the thesis. Okay, and notice that it's highlighted in green, and you can change the color. Let's say, oh, that's a good thesis, so we'll keep it a green, or that's a bad thesis, so we'll put it as red, or whatever you decide to do, or that's eh, okay. Um, so those are different ways that you can leave notes on their actual paper. Okay. Now, when it comes to grading, there's two things that you can do. Um, the first one is, again, this is the rubric button. So if you click on this, it brings up the rubric. Now, remember, in the last video, I showed you how to import the rubric, which was saved on the shelf, so you don't have to do this. It's already set up for you. So let's say when you're, you read through this and you're like, well, in content and ideas, I think they're under five. Well, it shows you exactly what a five would be. Oh, and you're like, well, they're not they're really master it, maybe a four. And you say, oh, okay, that's better as far as that goes. 
So let's say that you're just going through and you're grading this, and you think they did this, and they did that, and they did that. Um, okay, so let's say that's the grade that you think they earned. Okay. Now, to get the actual grade, you just hit Apply to Grade, whoop, and it pops it up. Now, the tricky part here is it does give you a little bit of flexibility because you think, well, you know what? For content and ideas, it was really not as low as a four, but it wasn't quite a five. You know, I want to kind of have these somewhere in between. It's not really a 68 paper. You can go in and just say, hey, like, I'm going to change that to a seven because that really should have been like a, like a 4.5. You know, if there isn't any place in it, it just kind of doesn't, you know, side by side. But you do have that option to override it if you want. Um, the next button down here, right here, so again, that's your quick marks. This one is where you can leave a note. So let's say you could write, you know, general feedback. This paper, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's general feedback you could give to them about their paper. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to look at here is the plagiarism. Okay, so this shows that 99% of this paper was plagiarized. Right, so if I click on this, it shows me exactly what was plagiarized. Oh, the whole thing. Okay. And where it came from. Ta-da! So when a student says, oh, I didn't plagiarize that, you're like, really? And it's also working, it also works, so let's say they went in and just changed a few words here or there. This plagiarism checker will change that. So let's say they were to change the word work to, I'm failing to turn in, let's say they changed it to assignments. It would still catch this whole basic sentence has been copied, and they just changed a word. So it's really pretty tight as far as this, and it shows exactly where it came from. So it's not your word against theirs whether or not they plagiarized it. You actually have proof that can back it up. Okay? Now, one of the reasons why we really want you to use Turnitin, well, not want you to, you're kind of required to use Turnitin, is that at the end of the semester, there are certain assignments where you have to save them, submit them to the school. You have to show graded papers that include the rubric. What? And also, if there's ever a question whether you have to defend a paper, whether it's plagiarized or not, you have to show the report. What? Well, how can you do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is if you click on this little button over here, you click on current view okay so this is if you click on this one it shows what they submitted current view shows what was graded and such like that now it's preparing an actual report for this paper so at the end of the semester I would go through and I would click this for this paper and it then creates a file Ta -da, there it is a PDF okay and here's the file okay so it shows exactly what I've graded okay the notes that I made and it shows the grade they earned, okay, and the notes that I made. And it shows the rubric of what I clicked on. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, and it shows the um, plagiarism. Oh dear, okay. So that's a big, again, so that is a file that then I could just save as, you know, file, save as, and then I just save it wherever. Um, so it's one file that has everything you need that you need to submit at the end. And it will save you hours upon hours of work at the end of the semester. It's a thing. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. So, all right. So there is grading and, in, yeah, and stuff or turn it in. Now, there are a few other options you can do. There's other things you can do with this. This is kind of the basics. Um, and you can play around with it some more. But... This will at least give you a general idea of how to get it up and running. All right, now go do it. Yay!